Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining our event. Uh, as usual, this is an event of the Italian Power BI user group. Um, this event is dedicated to Measure Killer uh, 2.0, which is the new version of Measure Killer, which, uh, as Gregor anticipated to me, is going to come out in the next few days or weeks. He will tell us later. Um, presenting all the new the new features and also the, the maybe the basic features for those of you who don't know know the products we can do a bit uh, of a summary of what the tool can do. Uh, as you are probably aware, Measure Killer is one of the uh, at this moment many external tools that we have in uh, in the external tools for Power BI landscape uh, as of today, um, and. It's probably one of the most interesting because it's one of the few that allows you to interact with the uh, measures and columns that are uh, the other objects that are used or not uh, in your uh, uh, data model. So uh, it's an interesting capability that uh, was, I think, introduced for the first time by by, by Measure Killer, um, and that can help a lot in uh, improving your reports and saving you time. Uh, but it's not only that, and uh, we will see it today with uh, Gregor. Uh, before we start, uh, if the slides help me, a uh, little bit of introduction about our user group. Uh, again, we are the Italian Power BI user group. We organize, uh, we are a community dedicated to business intelligence and all related technologies. And as the name says, with, there is a strong focus on Power BI. Uh, we organize on average meetings every two weeks, like this one, uh, with guests both from the Italian and international stages. Uh, you can join the community if you want. Also, if you are a non-Italian speaker, we do a lot of events in English. Um, so you feel free to, to join our social channels that you can find here. Uh, later, I will send, uh, as soon as I'm done presenting, I will send you the link tree that has all our uh, social channels so you can uh, you can decide if you want to follow us. Uh, if you are an Italian speaker, I suggest you especially to join the Telegram group uh, where we have a community uh, that talks about Power BI and everything related. Uh, the language used is Italian, so if you are a non-Italian speaker, unfortunately, this, uh, this channel uh, will be a bit useless. But feel free to join and ask questions in English. It's not a problem. Um, what is coming next? Uh, the event, this event with uh, uh, with Gregor is part of three events that we have dedicated to external tools or tools that are similar to external tools, like uh, the events that we will have on the 7th of February, uh, which is about uh, the VS Code extension for managing Power BI service APIs uh, built by Gerard Brutel. We come again to, to our user group to present this extension. Uh, if you work with Power BI service APIs, uh, uh, probably you you need to view, to view this event if you are a tenant admin and so on. Uh, this one will be obviously in English language as well, so you can join if you even if you don't speak Italian. And then on the 20th of February, we are going to have Marco Russo from SQL BI. I'm sure I don't have to present uh, with uh, Marco. Uh, and he will come to show DAX Optimizer to our user group. And again, DAX Optimizer, a new external tool that is built by the SQL BI and Tabular Tools team, which is dedicated to optimizing your DAX code. This one, unfortunately, will be in Italian. We are going to take advantage of the fact that Marco is, uh, is Italian, so we are going to have this, uh, this event in Italian. Uh, and then there are more events that are coming. We are still preparing the next events, but most likely the first event of March will be dedicated to Power Platform. Uh, but uh, we will see in the next few weeks. Um, just uh, a couple of notes, and then I'll leave the mic to, to Gregor. The community is open to everyone. If you want to present an event, uh, feel free to, to contact us. If you want to help us with anything, feel free to contact us. If you want to help the community or use the community to present a session that you have prepared. Uh, so thanks. If you have doubts, you can contact on our channels. We have a lot of them right now. We are basically on every social. Uh, and having said that, uh, let me uh, stop presenting so Gregor can. Uh, can start with this session. Well, thank you so much, Alessandro. Um, welcome, everyone. Good evening. Um, my name is Gregor Brunner. Um, I'm originally from Austria, but live in Switzerland. And we also have our team there, partly at least, and the company is there. Um, what do we do? Um, well, we are generally doing um, Power BI consulting and development, uh, mostly in the German speaking areas. Um, but uh, we also started uh, developing the external tool Measure Killer um, around one and a half years ago. 
I'm going to share with you my screen. Um, so you can find it on measurekiller.com. We have a full documentation there. Download. Uh, here is a little summary of what it does. Um, so you can download it from here. Um, there is uh, most features are free, but there's also um, some stuff to run in the Power BI service that is part of the paid version. We will show both today. Um, I will mention explicitly uh, to you which uh, which part of the tool is what, what I'm showing now, if it's uh, part of the paid version or not. Um, yeah, so you can download it from the website here, or you can also get it in the Microsoft Store. So uh, you can see it's right there. Actually, the funny thing is, even if you search for Power BI at some point, it will show up. There's not that many related tools in the Microsoft Store. Um, and we're currently in version 1.2.1, but actually this is about Measure Killer 2.0. So um, we made a huge jump from this to here. Um, that's why the last version we released was in October. This is American format. Um, so we have been working almost four months uh, on this new version. And it's a huge new version and it's not out yet. Um, I will show you today a version that we have still been developing today. Um, and if I say we, uh, so it's a small team, we're in total, we're five people, but we have two people who are mostly working on measure killer these days. Um, so it's quite a, quite an effort. Um, and this version has so many new things. It's like a completely new UI, a ton of new features. We changed almost everything. And, um, yeah, so that's what I want to show and it will come out uh, probably next week. Um, we thought about this week, but um, now again, today we found some stuff <laughs> that we have to fix. Um, so uh, it's taking a little longer. But generally, what what can you, what can you do with measure killer? So it kills measures, right? That's what the name impl implies. Um, but um, it does also much more than that. Um, so finding unused columns and measures, that's the main, uh, those are the main functions of the tool, I would say. Um, so it will go through the report and the data model, and it will tell you where everything is used. Um, by the way, if you have questions, please um, just go off mute. Um, I will take some breaks talking uh, uh, sometimes to give you some space uh, to ask your questions. Otherwise, I'm sure Alessandro will check the chat. Um, so maybe instead of showing the website, let's just go into Power BI. Um, I have this sales report here. Um, simple report, you can see we have like two buttons and some it's like a showcase report that we have. Um, and this is what we're going to analyze now with Measure Killer and we'll see what we get as an output. When I open Measure Killer, you can see we have those five different modes. What do they mean? The first one is analyzing one report or data set, meaning Everything is in one file. There's no live connection, multiple reports, no shared uh, model, whatever. Um, this is the simple report, basically. Then we have two modes for the shared data set, uh, actually three modes for a shared data set. And then we have a brand new mode, which gives you some kind of meta analysis of your whole Power BI tenant. So here we, we look at everything, but let's start simple. Uh, if I select this, First thing that Measure Killer does is say, okay, tell me your data set, yeah, or basically the, the report, yeah. In this case, the report and the data set are the same, it's the same file. That's the whole point of this uh, mode. And um, we analyze the not only the model, right? Most external tools, they check the model, the relationships, the measures, things like this. We do that too, but we also look into the visuals the filters, the conditional formatting. We even check Power Query, um, and we want to provide a full analysis of what's going on in the report and data model. So everything is ready. I can click on Run, and this new version is really fast. Uh, it's much faster than the old one. What do I get here? We can see here we have a summary. Maybe let's, let's start with the summary. I can immediately see that 52% of my data model, that means 52% of the size of the model um, is used, meaning it's used somewhere. I need it. That's the whole point. But what is more important is 
48% is unused. So I have half of my half to, half of the size of my data model is not used anywhere. It's basically useless. Yeah. I mean, of course, maybe we'll need it later. Um, but we know this best practice in Power BI to only load what you need into the model. And this is a really important best practice, maybe one of the top three best practices, I would say. But it's really hard to achieve this in reality because you have to load something and then, okay, you build something, but you, you're not going to go back to Power Query or something every time and add one more column. Um, it's it's very um, tiresome, you know. So probably we all load a little too much, then we start building, and at some point we don't remember anymore which columns, what we exactly did. And this tool is basically there to let it run, um, see what's going on. You can remove everything that is not needed. Um, and you can do this multiple times during the development of your of your report. So half of it is unused, right? Um, and then we have some other information here, how many unused measures. If we have local date tables, that's all part of this new version. It's checking more things in the model. But let's look at the main output here. You can see that this is sorted by the size. So I can see uh, every row here is one column, calculated column, or measure. So it's basically all the artifacts in my data model. Yeah, And then um, I can see if it's used or not. The red uh, rows are the ones that are unused. And you can see there is no uh, expand icon here, but the ones that are used, for example, like this customer key, I can open it and I can see, oh, is it used in an artifact? Artifact means like a measure or something. Um, then I can see, oh yeah, this customer key is used in the active customer's measure. Okay, but it's also used in a relationship. It's a key column, right? Makes sense. So here now I can go through everything and see where my artifacts are used, um, if they are used or not, then I can see the size of them. I can also sort by the number of uses. So the profit measure is the most widely used artifact in my model. It's used in other measures four times. And now here's something interesting. I can also see in those artifacts where it is used, if they are themselves used or not. So it's used in four measures. Three of them are used somewhere, but one of them is not even used at all. So that already tells you, okay, um, so why is it even used there if then maybe we, this means in the end that we can kick out this year-to-date profit measure. If I search it here, we'll see that it's red, it's unused, right? That's the same thing what we saw here. It's red, it's unused, but it is referencing the profit measure. And what we have now in the new version is I can right click and now I can see the DAX expression. So I can see exactly if this is true or not. And we can see calculate profit. So this is really the year to date is really um, referencing the profit. So I can double check this right click thing is completely new in, in this new version. Um, I don't want to overwhelm you with all these new things. You're seeing this the first time. So maybe we have some questions or um, what jumps to your mind when you see this? Um, do we have anything so far? Uh, we don't have any questions in the chat. Uh, um, well, I, I just want to come and yes, this is extremely useful. We all know uh, that, uh, as you said, uh, one of the best practices for Power BI is to avoid having unused objects, especially calculated columns, if they, if they have a huge size. Mm -hmm. um, but also with the measures, like I know for sure that uh, this most time wasting activity that I've done uh, before using uh, tools like Measure Killer was to check if a measure was used or not in a big report. That's for sure uh, one of the most exactly. painful activities. Or maybe you needed to use uh, some techniques like uh, putting the used ones in a folder that is that tells you that they are used. That's, you know like right. very, very homemade techniques to, to organize your model, but uh, this is much better for sure. Exactly. We also have a completely, well, it's not completely new, but it, um, it's pretty new. It's called, it's the what if analysis. So this is, um, gives. so here we have, we go down from the artifact and we see where the artifacts are used. But a lot of times, for example, when I develop reports, 
I want to see what is used on a certain page. And now I can see the different view. I can see all my pages in the report and you can see we have the overview page. It's a normal page and then we have three hidden pages. And I just have to open the overview page and I can see all columns that are referenced here somewhere. Um, and this is going down the tree. So this is really, you only need those 10 columns to build this page. So the whole point of this is, um, it also gives you the size, for example, how much it's consuming of the model. Um, and it tells you basically what you need to keep this page or what maybe you don't need anymore when you want to delete this page. And a lot of times we have some hidden pages in our report um, and that is you, it's you, something is used on this hidden page, but do we really need this page? Well, um, if not, then I can see here, for example, this distinct size here means that the 1.3% is, in this case, it's tiny, but it can be much more. 1.3% of my model is only used here. So basically, if I remove this page, I know I can save 1.3% of my model. Of course, this is tiny, but depending on your report, this can be a huge thing because you're using some very expensive columns only on a certain page, and maybe you don't need this page. And if your customer or whoever is asking you, hey, um, what if we take this page out? You can check here and immediately see how much, how much space you will be able to reduce from your model. So this is, is very, um, very powerful, I would say. And we have the same also for visuals. So we can see the most costly visuals. You can see here all my visuals and all the pages. And I can again see um, what it consumes overall. But and also this means just whatever it's referencing, but it could also this 20% is not like exclusively used here. It, it is also used somewhere else. So I'm not going to save the 20%. I'm only going to save this distinct size. This means it's only used in that visual. And then what is also really interesting in the what if analysis, I also have this full view, meaning I have full view of my model, all the tables, columns, I can see if it's used or not, relationships, uh, I can open the report, the pages, go down, visuals, see what is used in a visual, I can go down, visual filters, and even if a measure is referenced by a different measure, like I can go down the whole tree here. So if I expand this, I get the full, full tree of the dependencies in my report as well as the data model. Okay. And uh, so, Gregor, this is uh, this is using um, this is connecting to the PBX file, right? Yes. This is still completely offline. We're in the offline mode, this first mode of measure killer. Um, and it's just analyzing the report layout and the model. Because so, one of my questions, mm -hmm. and sure. I don't know if you want to answer now or maybe yeah, at the end, no, is uh, yeah. if um, the new the new PBP uh, extension uh, the, and capabilities that were added to Power BI that uh, now give you a report definition also, um, if you have already implemented something that leverages those features or it's just, yeah. it is still just using a... it's the same i mean for us it's basically the same pbip and pbix is not that much difference um so we can analyze both it doesn't really change anything yeah. for the pbip i think the the main or at least for now uh, the main difference is that they will introduce a new um layout or new uh, structure for the model, right? So it, it makes the model more readable and generally it splits report and data set. But for us, um, we have been doing this all along, basically. Uh, so uh, whatever they'll do probably will make our life a little easier, um, but um, it, it won't change much. Yeah. So now we know all this. We know we have 50% to save in this small report. We can now go to the killing part. Um, and you can see we have those three tabs, right? Results where we can check everything. Oh, by the way, the search is also completely no. For example, um, if I want to search um, everything that is used in a map visual, I will search for map. And you can see if I search all levels, immediately I can see which artifacts are used in the map. 
depending on which page, I can see what type of visual it is. Is it a standard visual or it's a custom visual? I can see which page of my report. Like, is this very powerful? Um, because you can find basically, I don't know, what is it? Uh, many to many relationship. Probably we don't have this, but I can just find everything that is used in relationships. I can find uh, all kinds of stuff here. Yeah. So let's go back to the removing things, right? How do I now go ahead and clean up my model? Measures and calculated columns, we can remove directly with a kill script that we have, similar to what Tabular Editor does in a C, C Sharp script. Um, so you can either, um, here I have all the unused measures and columns, calculated columns, sorry. Um, and uh, I can just either kill all or kill selected. And we can see um, that profit and revenue are here. And I can also see them here. So let's just see how this works. I'm just going to remove profit. Boom, done. And it's already gone here. So it writes to the model directly. And the cool thing is also now it's automatically gone here. Uh, year to date uh, profit is, is not enough. I don't have to even run again. It's automatically updated the table. And this also was not there before in the old version. Something that we also introduced in 2.0 that is completely new is this yellow. What is yellow? White is, is used somewhere. Red is unused. Yellow is used by unused. What the hell is that? Let's see. This measure is only used in a measure that is itself unused. What does that mean? Let's see, year to date costs, right? It's year to date costs. So now um, you see the used in unused. Okay, let's remove the used in unused. It's gone. Oh, now year to date costs is newly unused because it was only referenced there. And now that measure is gone. Now this is unused. So depending on how your model is built, you might need multiple um, runs or in this case it does it automatically but before we needed multiple runs and now the year to date costs is red so before it was yellow but now that i removed the measure um, that was referenced um, now this is unused so that's how i can clean up everything quickly so here we can just write to the model and of course some people might say "Oof, this is dangerous it's just gone right we have restore so everything that i ever removed um, is in this restore um, window. Um, this is basically putting some JSON files um, in my folder. So I, I can specify actually, in, in my case, it's a OneDrive folder because we're all, so everybody in our team, you can see is multiple users here. We're all um, backing up this, uh, the, so everything that you remove with measure killer will be backed up automatically. And then it puts all those backups in a folder that you can specify in the options in the main window. And you can see those are the two measures I just removed. It, it has a name. It has the DAX expression in the tooltip. It says when it was removed by who. This is the name of my I have an Alienware machine here. <laughs> That's what the alien. Um, and um, it's removed from this report. Um, so even if you are a team and you work together on one model or on multiple models, you can just restore any measure to any report. It doesn't really matter if it belonged to the report before or not. But if you want to put this measure in here, uh, you can do that. And in this case, now I just want to restore the ones I just removed. So I'm just going to so restore selected and boom, you can see it's already back. Um, and this is really safe. And um, the only thing is if I um, re restore, measure killer needs to run the logic again to update everything. When you delete, it can do it automatically. When you restore, you need to run again. But uh, in this case, it took, I think this is supposed to be milliseconds. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, um, so this is back now. Any questions so far? Uh, uh, Ricardo is asking for a clarification. Maybe you already told, but I didn't get it. Uh, but uh, does it work with a solution where the semantic model and the report are separated? Uh, yes. or also a solution where there is a single semantic model with multiple reports that are using the, that semantic yes. model. 
that's exactly what we will take a look at after. Um, we can. Do we have until seven thirty, or do we have a little yeah. more? Yeah. No, no, we can go a little more. We usually okay. go also a little more. Okay, great. Because I just want to show the simple version here, and then we'll go into the shared data set in all those modes um, after. So, removing calculated columns can be done also by just the killing, right? But then we have the normal columns, meaning the ones in Power Query. Uh, those are the important ones. That's where I can save a lot as well, right? So there, we cannot just remove them with one click. What we do is some kind of middle way. We have all the tables here that contain unused columns, and you can see it's sorted by the size. So my fact table has one megabyte of unused size, meaning the columns that I don't need make up 1.1 megabytes. And then I can choose the M code. Do I want to do a remove columns on those or remove other columns? I usually go for this one and I click on copy. Then I just need to go to here uh, to Power Query. I'm going to open the advanced editor. And I just select everything and paste whatever measure killer gave me. Click on done. And then you see it added one step at the end of my uh, transformations. Uh, this takes a little bit. Hopefully it will load. I hope um, uh, maybe I'm authenticated with the wrong account here. Could be. Uh, one second. I locked into somewhere else today. <laughs> Taking a long time. Also doesn't load. Okay. Hmm. Strange. Now let's try again. Hmm. Anyway, but um, so it adds a step at the end, safely selecting the columns. In this case, I did a select column to remove other columns, is select columns. And that's that way um you just click on close and apply. Um, and it will take those out. And that's it, basically. So it's very, this is even safer than removing the measures because worst case, you can either go here and put the columns back in, or you can click on the, um, you can just remove this step. Um, I think something I have to. Just gonna it's, uh, it's, it's, it gives you like, um, the Power Query uh, code with another uh, with another row, and you can just yes. Control A, Control, control exactly. uh, V. And you do this uh, for all the tables. It, it's some there's some manual work involved, unfortunately, but this is just how it is. We don't have any other ways. Um, yeah, that's that's basically how it works. So the shared data set. Um, so let's see. I have a data set and a Power BI service, right? That's what um, the question, that's what Ricardo asked. Um, I have a data set here, one model and multiple reports. How do I do that? I need to download everything in this second mode. So the those two are part of the free version, meaning everything is locally. And then the in the Power BI service, Measure Killer will automatically, you can select the data set and will find all the connected reports, analyze everything. But in the free version, you need to do the hard work yourself. Um, so I need to open my data set first. It's this one. I'm going to show a different data set now, a big one, so we can see a little bit more interesting things. Um, so it also already said, hey, you have nothing open. Um, so I need to open Power BI first. Um, let's give it a second. Now I can refresh this. OK, so I need to select the data set first thing, right? I need to have the data set uh, on my machine and all the reports. So the reports that are connected here, I need to download them as well manually. Now it's asking, do you want to add the data set pages? What does that mean? Well, imagine I have a visual, I have a one page in, on, in the data set um, and, and I did some testing there. Do I want to include that in the analysis? I'm just going to say yes, because there's not much there anyway. 
Now it wants to have the file, again, the dataset file, dataset selection. You have to specify the Power BI file. Go to next. Okay, so now I have my data set and now I need to add the reports. So in my case, I have those four reports. Those are in the Power BI service connected to this data set. And I can just drag and drop them, drag and drop them in here. Or I can add them manually using this little uh, option. And now I click on run. And you can see, oh, this is a big one, right? I can already see 80% is used, which is good. This is good. Um, but still, I have 500 megabytes unused. And I'm telling you, we have seen some crazy models over the time. I mean, people had like a model, I think 19 gigabytes, and I think 80% was unused. They cut it down to three, four gigabytes. Nothing was used actually, but nobody knows, right? The problem is nobody nobody understands. <laughs> it's hard to find out. Um, so that's why um, it can be really useful to use some tools there. So now we, you can see we have some really big columns here. This is my surrogate key. It's a calculated column. I'm crazy. I built this column, see 600 megabytes. Wow. And it's used. But hey, where is it used? It's in a, used in a visual. Okay. Table, table visual, test page. A test page. Hmm, interesting. Okay, let's take a look. Um, let's look at the pages. You can see here, oh, test. This is a hidden page. So in my case, I already know that actually this page, I don't need it, right? It's some crazy test page. And that's the only where the only place where my most costly column is used. Of course, I prepared this, right? But it can be like that. It can be that some key column is super expensive, super heavy, and maybe it's only used on some, in some place where nobody actually needs it. Um, or it could be used in a relationship and the whole table is actually not used. It can be a couple of things. Um, that's why even if it is used, you might be able to remove it. But let's look at all the unused ones. And here even, as you can see that this primary name column has almost 500 megabytes and it's not used anywhere. So here I can really save a lot and I can clean this up really well. Um, and of course, what we want to see is also we have a multiple reports connected to this. Where do I see this? Uh, if I go to expand, we have to, um, for example, here, this one I can already see source is usually, maybe let's collapse it. Source is always the data set. Besides, I have some report level measures. So I see those too. So you can see this report level measure only exists in the thin file in the live connected report. And here I can also see the DAX expression. What are those guys doing? Okay, mm -hmm. interesting. Um, so now I can see everything from the model plus all the report level measures of all the reports I added. And if I wanna take one out, I can just do this and run again. Uh, so I have full flexibility here or add reports later. But let's see, for example, um, if I want to see what is used in this, uh, we have this report called director versus actor. Actually, maybe let's open one of the reports because they're actually quite nice. Um, I think the best move is a nice report. You can take a look. Um, and those are all connected in the Power BI service, right? But I download everything and then Measure Killer doesn't really care about what's going on in the service. It just takes the report layouts and compares it to the model. So it doesn't even know that there's a connection somewhere. It doesn't have to know. Everything like this can be done offline. Uh, there's no internet connection even necessary. Um, so, oops. Any questions? Uh, no questions from the chat. Uh, Ricardo is saying that uh, he's in love with this tool, which I agree. <laughs> it's uh, really, really interesting features. And uh, about this, uh, uh, because I don't remember, is this part of the 2.0 or was this yes. already in? It's, it was uh, already in before, but with less features. I mean, you could do the same thing, but it just looked different. Um, 
this, the yellow things, we didn't have those. We didn't have the summary. Um, it was slower, um, but generally you could, you can already analyze the shared data sets in the version that is out there now. Um, I think maybe there's some kind of message or why does it not open? It's very interesting that I have some problems with Power BI today. It's very, very strange. I think it's probably the authentication that is, has the wrong account, but it should still open, right? Hmm. Um, it looks like it doesn't want to open. Anything? No. Hmm. Okay, forget it. Um, I can show anyway. So, so we saw that we have the report level measures, right? But also, you can see obviously every artifact. Let's see this. What did we have? Director, it's called, um, or best movies. Okay, I want to see what is used in best movies. I can just uh, search through all the levels here and I have to go to a source. So now I can see basically all the columns from the original data set that are used in the best movies. Um, this is maybe not the perfect view for this, but I can also see it in the what if analysis. We have this reports part, and this is especially for the shared um, shared data set, right? You can see basically all the reports here um, that are connected to the data set, and you can go down the full tree. You can see which columns are in use. You can see the report level measures, if they are used or not. You can see the measures from the data set and what they're doing, which columns they're referencing. You can see everything here. And this is really interesting here. It gets really interesting. This is telling me what we already saw in the main table, but in a quick summary, you can save up to 575 megabytes, 24% of the model by removing the test page from the best movies report. Wow. That's exactly what I need, right? Um, and the same thing, the table, this, because it's, it, there's only one visual on that page. That's why those two are the same. Um, and then when I click here, I will be able to see that best movies test page, this table visual is using um, this calculated column and it's only used there. Okay. And then I can also see, I don't know, we also try to put a size on measures. So we say, okay, this measure is using this column. So the measure has a kind of calculated um, size of XYZ just by the sum of the columns. And then, of course, if those columns are only used in that measure, then it means if you delete this measure, you can also remove those columns. Okay. Um, what else do we have here? Uh, let's go back. Um, what's the most used? What's, what's the most used? Uh, oh, I have a bug here. One second. Oh, okay. Let me just run again. Sorry. Yep, that was clear that we still have some problems. That's why we haven't released this version yet. Uh, we have sometimes that in the um, in the table that it doesn't show. Um, oh, I forgot to add the report. Sorry. That it doesn't show those um, expand icons anymore. So here we go. What was the mostly used? Oh, primary profession. So this is used only four times. I mean, obviously this is not a real world example, but I can see, for example, that this column from the data set has four megabytes. It's used in a calculated column in the data set, which is not even used. So Okay, this doesn't even count. And then the rest, it's used in a table in one of the thin files in the director versus actor report, and also in a visual level filter, in a card visual. And the cool thing is, even for visuals, you can get the um, the metadata here. So if you open this, you can see the coordinates. Uh, you can see how big the visual is, where it is on the canvas. You can see it says measure extension. That basically just refers to um, 
where it lies in the in the report layout and you can see like this reference so you get all kinds of interesting information also on the columns you can see some technical details basically um do we have anywhere something is used in power query uh, no i guess not here okay but we'll see this later by the way, the export I haven't mentioned yet. We can also export to Excel. Um, then I just go um, save this. You can see it's it's doing the, the data set name and some date timestamp. And then um, file has been saved. Let's see. Uh, should be here. Yeah, IMDB data set. So here I get a full documentation of everything. And this shows you more than what you see in the measure killer output. More than here. For example, you also have all the DAX expression nicely together. Um, you can see some stuff like, I think, visual IDs, um, some coordinates, uh, things like that. Yeah. So you can run this maybe and just have a good documentation of, of your model and reports. You can see also again here columns, calculate columns, report level measures, and so on. Cool. So now let's go into the Power BI service. Um, I'm going to skip this mode three because the mode four does the same, but um, it's better because this one is using normal user credentials in Power BI, meaning any, any normal user, but this is using admin, tenant admin settings. Um, why? Because here I will only, so what we're going to do is we're going to select data set and then ask Measure Killer to find all the connected reports. But what if you don't, you don't have access to all the workspaces in your tenant, right? So you only have access to a couple of workspaces and then it will only search those. But this mode here, the tenant admin mode, will search the whole Power BI tenant um, and find all the connected reports. And as I said at the beginning, um, those online features are part of the paid version. Yeah? But let's see what this can do. So first, it will ask me, do you really want to search the whole tenant? Imagine you have thousands of workspaces. Or do you want to select the workspace and not search everything? Our tenant is not that big. So I'm just going to search the whole tenant. And um, it doesn't take really long. Um, oh, not responding. This is not good. Let's see. Did I get an error? No. OK. Thing looks good and it's strange. I can just kill the process. Oh, no. Nope, this doesn't work. Let's kill this and try again. Hmm. It's really strange. I have so many online authentication problems today. Seems like I cannot do anything here. Hmm. I haven't tested this today yet. Um, everything working here. This is also kind of slow, but working. Maybe it's just a little slow. And we have to wait. Um, okay, so but what we want to do is we want to analyze a centralized data set, right? In, in our case, it's this weather data set. It has a lot of reports connected. Um, and we can see here in the UI already that it has 14 Power BI reports and it has six paginated reports connected. And um, it even has some child, some composite models built on top of this. It's a widely used um, semantic model. But as you can see here in the UI, there is more, but I don't have access. What does that mean? Well, I have access to a lot of workspaces, as you can see. You probably in your organization have access to much less, but even if you're an admin, you don't automatically have access to all the workspaces, right? So the admins, they have to grant themselves access. It's tedious work. 
um, but we can do um, something to basically find everything. Um, but in the UI, even if you're an admin, you won't see the full lineage. So it just gives you a hint that there's more, but it doesn't tell you where or what's going on. Um, that's why, haha, this really doesn't work on the uh, Okay, let me try something else. Um, that's why we can use the, um, the admin, uh, the tenant admin uh, mode, basically. Uh, let's see if this works. Okay. Well, uh, all right. So if this doesn't work, then I have to go, go back to the good old version that is out now um, because there it will work. So we have the same mode here in the old version. It's just not that good. Um, and I would have really loved to show you. Wow. I think there's some problem with the authentication in my tenant, but I just don't know what it is. Hmm. Did my internet connection? Let me check something real quick. You guys can hear me well, right? Yeah, we can hear you well, and also we can see. Um, while uh, while uh, you you investigate this, I, I mean, I think the, the the purpose is clear. Even if we can yeah. see the the demo, uh, as you were going to do something very similar to what you show on uh, locally, but uh, right. without the need to download all the all the reports on on your right. local machine. Um, and yeah, it's definitely. Uh, it's an enterprise use case for sure, uh, because uh, it's uh, something that you probably need if you have a uh, self-service BI implemented, I would say, uh, or something that we could call self-service BI, where you prepare the models for uh, a whole lot of users that uh, are going to use uh, uh, the same model, connect to the same model in, uh, in your organization. Mm. And uh, right. imagine if you had to go through every person to ask, are you using this measure or check every one of the reports? which are usually very messy, uh, especially if they are uh, so-called uh, power users uh, with a lot of tests, uh, a lot of lot of charts. You never know what they are using, what they are not. Um, mm. So, yeah, the ability to go through the cycle, through the service and view what is used and what is not, uh, for sure, it's another very useful uh, feature. Right. Do we have any questions? Uh, no, we don't. There is there is another person that is saying that he's really impressed. Antonio is uh, is, is impressed with the tool, um, but uh, no, we don't uh, have any more questions okay. at the moment. Okay. So let me try again. Oh, here we go. I so I just reset my Wi-Fi. I just reconnected my Wi-Fi, and I think now it's working. This is really crazy. It's it's very strange. I didn't. Okay. So let's see. Um, let's see. Okay, so I'm gonna try again. Yeah, no, it should work. I don't know why, but there I couldn't even ping this website, and this usually works. Search whole tenant. Here we go. So, um, it triggers the authentication. Um, so first thing I need to do in this online mode, I need to sign in with my Microsoft account. Okay, once I did this, um, this was really a problem with my connection. This is interesting. Um, I need to select the data set, right? In our case, um, we had this weather data set. Um, so I'm going to select it here. I have all the premium workspaces here in my tenant. Um, and now I'm running this as an admin. So I can do almost anything here. Click on next. And you can see I get a full lineage. Uh, let me make this a little bigger, actually, because this is quite powerful. And it's better than what I have in the UI. Um, in the UI, I only see whatever I have access to. But here, you can see this a lot. Uh, we have every report in the whole tenant that is connected to this data set. We can see also those child models or composite models and the reports that are connected to it. Even we can go down three layers. Like This is, of course, a, um, a test for us if everything is working correctly. but Theoretically, you can build three levels of uh, semantic models 
and they all pull data from each other until the fourth level, it's game over. It's the limitation from Microsoft. Um, but so here I can find everything. Um, and you can see it has Power BI reports and paginated reports connected to it. Yeah. And then even if I want to add some local files, it could be something analyzed in Excel. It could be a PBIP, PBIR, PBI, whatever, paginated report. Um, I can drag and drop it in here and make it part of the analysis. The goal here is to really make sure that no report will break down. So I have all the reports that are connected and I can take out, for example, some of the test reports. I say, those can break down, no problem. Can take out this, whatever, can take out this whole model. But then on the rest, I want to run this. Um, and the only thing I cannot do is if there is a model in a pro workspace, because this is all premium XMLA is a premium feature, right? If there's a model in a pro workspace, this is out of scope. And if somebody has a report in a personal workspace, we will also see it here, but I cannot really get the report there. So we don't really care about that. But once I'm done here, I can say run, and then I'm going to do this XMLA connection on the data set to get the metadata. And this is really important. Measure Killer only analyzes the metadata. It never checks any data. It doesn't care about the data. Um, it, the speed of the whole analysis depends on how many columns, how many measures you have, how many custom visuals. Um, and it doesn't really matter if you have one row or 100 billion rows. So now it's getting all those metadata from the reports um, and from the data sets. And you can see we have multiple data sets here. So even if you rename something in the child, in this composite model, we will track it all the way down from the parent model to the grandchild model. So it's, it's a full analysis. It takes a little bit to get all this and you can see everything was a success. It could also Maybe there is something that could throw an error, then we would see this here, but in, in this case it worked. And boom, I have my output. And now, since we have so many reports connected, you can see here the city start column is used 24 times. You can see it's used in three report level measures, in the relationships, visuals. Oh, I can map really nice car, uh, map visual. For example, I can now search um, everything that is used in an icon map. So all those artifacts, all those columns, you can see, um, oh, I can map, I have to spell it. You can see this, those things I need for all the icon maps in all the reports or the model. Uh, so I can quickly find really interesting things. And of course we have the summary again. And we can see that even though we have tons of reports connected to the model, 22% is unused. And what we can do is now we can write to the model in the service and remove stuff directly. There's no difference really. I can just kill and it will be also in the restore again. So no, um, no damage done. Um, so the only thing we cannot do currently, at least, is um, this M code. We still have to put it into the data set ourselves. So we cannot write to the model yet. So for the shared data sets, this I would say is the ultimate analysis because you get the full lineage and you can make sure that um, nothing breaks down when you run this on your model. For sure. We also have the what if analysis again. We can see, for example, um, that yeah, we, we can get all kinds of, we can see all the reports here. Um, and basically, yeah, I've shown this. The last thing I want to show is the this completely new mode that we have been working on. That is something, in my opinion, um, really, really amazing. I've not seen anything like this ever. Um, it's we call it tenant analysis. 
So here, we're going through the whole tenant. Now you can see it just takes a few seconds and we already have a nice overview of the whole Power BI tenant. In our case, we just have 100 workspaces, but we've already tested this for 1,500 workspaces and it, was, it worked just fine. We can see how many workspaces, how many premium, how many pro do I have, how many models do I have, uh, reports, page unit reports. Then you can see here every artifact is a workspace. You can see if it's in pro or premium. We can also see which capacity it is attached to. You can see PP3 here, premium, uh, premium per user actually. So this is uh, internally, it's a P3, but actually it's a premium per user. We have premium per user in, in our company. And we also have this fabric trial capacity. And I can see all the workspaces here. Um, so I can already see how many reports are in every workspace, right? So this MK workspace is a big one. So I'm gonna select this, you can see also how many models, whatever. Um, and now I'm gonna start the analysis. This is just the selection. I'm gonna run this and it will take a few minutes to run. Um, because I'm on analyzing 58 reports, nine paginated reports, and 39 models. We, I hope it should be okay. You can see it's quite fast, but it will take maybe one or two minutes. In the meantime, we can answer questions, or we also built this lineage view, which is really cool, because here you can see all the models in your whole tenant. And you can see um, how many reports are connected and where those uh, reports reside. So for our big model, the weather data set, you can see, you can see all the reports here. I can see the child models. Um, I can basically see where everything, everything that's going on. Um, and I have a full search. So if I expand this, I can maybe find, I don't know, um, what else, what could we search for um, maybe the IMDB you can see here I can find everything all models that um, are linked to an IMDB report for example um, but it really depends on you I could also search for uh, I don't know a certain capacity right PP3 I have to select the capacity now I can see all the models there all kinds of stuff. I can just play around with this while I'm waiting because this is really taking some time. It's analyzing over 100 artifacts and getting all their metadata, doing a lot of API calls. Um, so we have to wait a little bit. But uh -huh. I think I have a question in the sure. in the meantime, um, because uh, uh, I, I'm always really confused about roles, uh, admin and so on. Uh, do you need to run these uh, as an admin of the tenant to view everything yes. or and if you weren't an admin could you run it and see just the workspaces that that you can see or uh... um so it's really important to run this as an admin because the admin api calls are much more powerful than the normal api calls okay. so the normal api calls have all kinds of limitations um I don't get everything, but the admin API calls, they can give you, like, we have a limit here of 50,000 workspaces. <laughs> I mean, like, is this really, I, I don't know if it will work with 40,000, to be honest, but uh, we only tested it with 1,500, like I said. But um, this is really built for scale. And if you don't run, if you don't use the admin API calls, everything will take forever. And also, for example, this lineage, it's really crazy that uh, if you're a normal user, it's really hard to build the lineage because um, if you, for example, analyze a model, you don't know if, uh, if there is a direct query uh, on, on top of the uh, data set. In the API call, it doesn't give you every detail. But if you run the admin API call, then you can basically build the full lineage. Um, and in an, as a normal user, you cannot even if you have access to all the workspaces, it's it's a limitation, unfortunately.
So what are we going to see here, right? Um, maybe we can prepare this a little bit. We will have those two tabs here activate, and this is really something um, really amazing, I think, because um, since we analyze the reports and the models, we can basically find anything. So we'll be able to find, I don't know, all the custom visuals that are used in our tenant. Uh, we'll be able to see who is building report level measures. We can see who is using local date tables, right? We will guys. Um, uh, of course, I have to select all the workspaces to get a full picture, and it will take some time. It might take hours, depending on how many hundreds or thousands of workspaces I select. And also, there are some limitations probably, uh, and it's not perfect, right? This is. This is something really cool, but um, we need to test it a little more. That's why it's it will be released next week, but um, but it will be in preview. You can also see that when it's done, we also get some errors. For example, the apps we cannot really analyze those. Um, also have like a lake house data set, so some um, uh, scorecards those those we just cannot analyze, but that's fine everything else we have. Now you can see all those models here. So it's finished and you can see all. Oh, I can see how many calculated columns. Ui, what's this? 1,400. <laughs> Who did that? Criminal, go to jail. That's Klaus. Well, actually he didn't build this report, but um, yeah, he knows the person who built this report. And if I open this, you can see, boom, local date tables, yellow, warning, um, 1,000 calculated columns just in the local date tables. So 90 megabytes of this um, data set is local date tables. That's what, 60% or something? Um, you can see the tables. You can see all the measures. Uh, you can also see even the DAX expression here uh, in the tooltip, I think, yeah. Um, so you can get a really nice picture of the whole tenant and uh, open this up. You can see all the connected reports. You can see um, this one has one page and 51 hidden pages. Um, yeah, you can, like I said, for example, this local date tables is something really fun. Um, we can find all the models with that uh, collapse. Uh, so here we can see all the, yeah, those two basically have local date tables. I can find who has uh, many to many relationships. Uh, uh, I think it's bi-directional, is it bi-directional? No. Uh, relationships, active, many, many to one. Where do I have it? Many to many. To many. Oh yeah. Many to active. Oh, I think I have to, I'm searching in the wrong column. Huh. Many to many. Here we go. Now I have all the, <laughs> all the data models with many to many relationships. Okay, and so on. But other stuff. Reports, number of visuals, number of custom visuals, report level measures. Uh, I can also see them, obviously. You can see that DAX expression. Um, number of pages. Um, and something, what is really important to the admins are custom visuals, right? Um, I really like, I can map, so I'm going to search for that. And now all those, um, all those reports have the icon map. So if you want to, this is really, really hard to do manually. It's almost impossible. Um, because custom visuals are, are so deep inside the report layout, it's really hard to dig them up. Anyway, do we have any questions? Uh, we don't. Uh, let's, let's see if someone has any questions before, uh, before we finish. But uh, sure. I have to say, this, this is really amazing. It's like the definitive, uh, definitive uh, admin tool, because uh, <laughs> uh, if you're an admin, normally you get the uh, uh the, the the responsibility of using the resources uh, correctly the, the capacities the, right. the, uh, the 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 costs uh, and, and everything else but you know you when you have a large organization especially uh you don't have 
that much control over what uh, what is happening. So uh, with this, uh, it's it's like you have uh, cameras all over the the company, and you can go to a person and say, "Why are you using 50 local day tables, exactly. or uh, why are you using a big a big column that that is then uh, not used in the in the airport and so on?" So and, and much more, obviously. Uh, I can come up with uh, yeah. better examples, but. Uh, why does anybody have a page with 267 visuals? <laughs> I mean, right? And we can see even oh, it's all kinds of stuff, buttons, buttons, buttons. Anyway, um, I just want to show this is what we're working on. It's still not perfect, but um, will be released hopefully next week. Yeah.